Hey everybody, it's Kevin here, and I've hinted at this, talked about a little bit on Twitter, but I haven't really told anybody exactly what I've been up to in this regard, and I thought I'd show people a little bit about what I'm, I'm working on and in my spare time, and that is I am making this game that, uh, that I've been sort of thinking about for a while, and I wanted to show you the little things I've done with it and sort of tell you about the learning process of learning how to make something like this, which has been challenging and wonderful all at the same time. Uh, I uh, had thought a lot about the, the tool that I wanted to use, and I, I have made games before in creation tools like you get with Little Big Planet and Spore Galactic Adventures. I, I worked on quite a few that I was very proud of, actually, in that. And uh, I actually had been working on something really involved in Project Spark, and it got to the point where I realized the more I work and work on this, the fewer people were ever going to get a chance to play it because only people with Project Spark would ever be able to play it. So here it is, and uh, I don't have actually a lot to show. There's no real gameplay yet. Um, but I can tell you about what's going to go in there, the content that's going to go in there, and show you some of the basics that I did, so you get an idea about what I'm doing. Um, I'm using Construct 2 is the, is the tool that I landed on. Um, for a few reasons, um, number one is that the idea I ended up coming up with is 2D, and Construct 2 is, uh, is really meant for, for 2D uh, games, which is great. Oops. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, that, that made it easy. Plus it was affordable, it's 129 bucks um, for an individual license. Um, you can try it out for free though, um, but uh, I couldn't really get very far with the free version, in part because my idea involves having a lot of layers, which is uh, one of Construct 2's best features. Uh, layers are very common in 2D games. Um, in part because that's how you get parallax effects, meaning that that's how you get effects where when you move across the stream, uh, the screen from left to right or right to left, it's how you get different, you know, different scrolling speeds for different uh, for different objects and different different parts of the landscape. So I had an idea with layers, and Construct Two seemed like a really good choice. Um, the other. Th um, well, why don't I just show you, I guess, what it is that I that I sort of want to do. So here's a little little screen of what I'm doing, and and really the idea here is that the the, the the seeds for this were the depression that I went through many years ago. Well, I should say the depression that I still struggle with occasionally, um, that but was most severe. In my uh, in my late teens and early twenties, and I wanted to do something that had that sort of reflected some of the emotions from that time and was a little bit autobiographical. But at the same time, I wanted to make something that was also fun to play, which which seems like a little bit of a contradiction. Hey, I want to make a game that uh, that echoes my depression, but is also fun to play. <laughs> um, but I actually had an idea that I really liked. Um, so really it's it's two games in one that are layered on top of each other so let me give you an idea so here you see um i don't have a name for these things yet or even a name for the game but right now in my mind i just call this the adventuring layer and so here there's a place where no combat occurs and i'm envisioning this game it's a twin stick shooter um although half of it involves no shooting so up here you see this, it looks like a little sun, um, but this is you, the player. Um, I kind of think of this as your soul. This is, this is your center moving through the world, and uh, you've got this bucolic place. Um, right now I'm using placeholder art. I don't know what everything is going to look like in the end. Um, the good news is that there's so much stuff out there for people trying to make their way in game development. 
um, so many resources where you can get public domain art and, and art that people just give you for free, um, or as long as you don't make any money off of it. And right now, I don't intend on making any money off of this. I'm just, I'm just using it to uh, create something um, to see if I have the chops. And uh, so far, I'm really, I'm really kind of proud of what I've done, come up with. So, but this is you. It will be a twin stick shooter. I don't have any twin stick shooting to show you today, though, sadly. But I am using an Xbox 360 controller to move around. And uh, a couple things to note here before you go in is I haven't really got, even though I've been doing this for about a month, um, I don't really have much to show. Um, partially because this isn't just the creation process, but the learning process at the same time. So I'm sort of learning and creating as I go. And uh, because of that, my victories are small victories. You know, the little things that I've learned how to do um, is, is, is what everything is about right now um, as I go through. Every time I discover to, to implement just something tiny, um, I get really, really excited. Um, just the speed of the movement um, was something I got really excited about. The fact you can see down here, you can see the uh, um, the swaying of the grass. That that meant learning how signs worked, um, how to implement sine waves into objects and things like that. And that was fun. And I learned something. Um, you you also see actually multiple layers here for parallax. Um, so as you see, I move across my speed player is different than the background in the back, which is where the mountains are, which moves slowly, which is different than the foreground, which is where the, uh, which is where the grass is, which is different from another layer, which is where the, ro the, the rose is, the tulip, whatever you want to call that is, and as you see if I move, I don't know if you can tell, but as I move back and forth, the, the flower does not stay behind the same grass, and so you know, the idea here is to give a, a, a sense of, you know, of dimension and motion even in a two-dimensional space. Um, so like I said, the art will probably change and I'm fine with that. I just wanted to give you sort of an idea. And that doesn't even include the very far background, um, which, is a, which is a color tile, which, is, which moves very, very slowly as you move across. It's so, so slow that you can't tell. Quite a while, so so there's that. But the reason that layers are more important to me here is because there are really two games going on at once. So this is the adventuring layer. What you're going to do is go through here. You're going to come across objects, and things to explore, and maybe characters to talk to, and that's going to flesh out um, sort of my emotional aspect of the game. Um, there won't be any combat here, but thing is, you can then switch, boom, to a different layer. And what's happening here is this is where the, the dual stick shooting is actually going to take place. And the idea when you're shooting is that as you shoot things, you're not going for score. You are going for time. Because what you want to do is you want to earn yourself time to be able to be back in the adventure so that you can progress through the story and so that you can see more stuff. And I'll tell you a little bit about more about that in a second when I go back. Um, but here, obviously, the visuals are going to change. Um, this is where the gameplay shooting is going to take place. Um, there's still a whole lot that I need to do when it comes to um, the objects that you see on this layer versus the objects that you don't see on the other. But I wanted to give you an idea. You could... <laughs> Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, you, you can also probably tell the music changed. And that was important to me that the, the music change. Um, so that the music when you're shooting is going to be different, obviously, than the music when you're back in the adventure. Um, I want that to change. Also, you know, some things that I did there um, that you may not really be able to tell is I added a little bit of a slowing effect. So when I change layer, there's a slowing like that. So that's, that's, you know, a choice that I very much wanted to be there because I wanted there to be some sense of transition. I also have a sound effect in there that's basically a <clears throat> sort of thing. So it might seem like there's not really much going on here, right? So far it's just that 
this is stuff that I've wanted to learn how to do and I really want to get these basics in there before I start fleshing out all of the things that are going to be happening in the game. That's going to take a little bit of take a little bit of time still. Um, but I'm really happy with these little bits. Um, even just you know, doing things like learning how to pause and unpause the game. You know, that takes me hours where it might take somebody else, you know, maybe minutes. Um, but once I get it, then I have that technique available to me and I know what to do. And luckily, the Construct 2 forums are full of people um, that have already, you know, accomplished certain things. And so they're really great people out there in the community that can, that can help you out. But anyway, back to the game. Um, so you, so now you kind of hopefully get an idea of these two layers. Here's where the shooting is going to be. Here's where the, here's where the adventure is going to be. Um, but see the, the flower. Now what happens? So when you hover over the flower, you get that little explosion of particles. That was another fun thing: is learning how to do particles and how to make that look good. All sorts of variables to think about there, like gravity and acceleration, and, and uh, number of particles and how quickly they fade, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you see, when I hover over it, it also has, it says memory, and when I go off of it, it stops saying that. Even even that little thing, just figuring out how to do that fade in and fade out, and make it work the way I wanted to, that actually took some doing. So, uh, I'm, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Now here's the way this part of the game is going to work as you go through. We'll come to places and you'll be able to, to, to come to memories or, or, you know, entirely, you know, big areas where you can interact with things. And if I want to interact here, then suddenly I have some, uh, some dialogue. So, right here the dialogue's not really important, it's, it's a memory about grandmother and every time you come across something like that you'll get you know you'll get some dialogue and then you will get to make a choice sometimes it will be two choices maybe more they're color-coded to go with the button prompts there will eventually hopefully be a tutorial that teaches people this so that uh, you know because I it just seems like I don't really want to have like a big letter, a big A button uh, symbol there. Um, but the idea is, okay, so you'll choose A if you choose the first option and press X if you want the second option. And whenever you make a choice like this here in the adventure, that's going to affect something in the shooting. So then let's say that I choose the first one, um, which says I see beauty in the yellow petals and so on. So what will happen, it might be aesthetic or it might be gameplay. In this case, I'm thinking maybe aesthetic, you know, uh, yellow petals float through um, the space as you shoot. Um, or if you choose the other option, which is more about darkness and nothingness, then what I'm envisioning is, okay, the music goes through a low-pass filter and suddenly gets very dark and, and ominous as a result because all of the high, you know, all the high frequencies are gone. Um, and the idea is that you go through um, the game, and as you go through the game, um, those choices, some of them will be permanent, um, well, they'll last through the course of the game, and some of them will be temporary, and they will layer on each other. The idea being that the choices that uh, you make here are going to make sure that the shooting itself is never the, the same thing when you play it. There will be other places that I think of as sort of dead ends in the adventure. When you make a certain choice, um, you're, you're going to maybe play a, a very particular level at that stage and move on and never see a bunch of things that you went past. Um, I'm thinking that uh, a, a playthrough would be maybe 30 minutes long. And uh, in that 30 minutes, um, I'm hoping that people would want to go back because there are so many choices they didn't catch. Um, or they want to see what it's like to play the game when they choose other things. Um, and then once you're in the shooter, you're shooting objects, and you're gaining time, and uh, because then you'll want to go back into the adventure so that you can continue the story. But every time you make a choice in the story, you're going to be shoved back into the gameplay. Um, so I'm really excited, especially because when it comes to the shooting itself, I have some really cool ideas 
what mechanics I want to implement. Some of the choices that you make in, in the adventure, on the other hand, like for example, I, I already have a thing that I want to do um, that takes place with the church. And so with the church, um, you know, you might, you know, a choice might be an angel fights by your side for a little while in the air. Um, or, you know, perhaps you, you know, your enemies might be acting a little differently. Um, so eventually I want, this is, you know, basically you're gaining power-ups in the adventure or power-downs in the adventure. You're giving power-ups to your, to your enemies. Um, or you're just changing the mood. But in any case, all of these things will layer on top of each other until the game starts looking, sounding, and playing different. And it will be different each time because you'll be making different choices. But your goal in each, your goal in the adventure is to get back into the shooting to see what your choices are like. Your goal in the shooting is to get back into, is, is to earn time so you can get back into the adventure and go through the story and, and make more choices. So that's, that's the idea behind the game. Um, I can't really show you most of that because I'm still working on these little things. But I kind of love working on these little things. I'm very excited. I had to reload because that's a dead end right now. I don't have any way of getting past. <laughs> once you go, once you go to the flower and come down here and choose the and choose the dialogue, I have the I haven't even implemented anything beyond that. This was all test. This was all me seeing what could be done. Um, but it's all the little stuff is the stuff that I'm really excited about. Just. Every time I, f I, I overcome one little obstacle, like how to make the flower go back and forth, and how to, how to make the text fade in and out, and how to make those particles work the way they do, and, and, and how to use variables. I mean, just to give you an idea, this is the code I have for just that little bit, and it, it may not look like much, but it, it excites me. Um, it, it excites me a lot. When I say code, I should be careful. Like, you know, Construct 2 isn't code heavy. I mean, you're still going to learn code. You're still going to learn, you know, the code that you need to know and, and, and that kind of stuff for a lot of it anyway. But it's really more about logic. It's really about taking the tool and then morph and then using the variables in the software, creating your own variables. Um, like you can see up here at the top, like I already have variables here regarding um, regarding angles, um, regarding whether or not particles have, have already gone out, Re regarding whether or not you're overlapping an object or not, Regar regarding whether, um, you know, one that's basically, is, you know, is the game paused or unpaused right now? One is, is have you activated the text or not? You know, one is, you know, re regarding bullet time and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really kind of exciting for me to figure some of this stuff out, you know? Um, so anyway, that's what I've been sort of up to, people have been asking, but uh, I'll give you one, one more quick look um, at the actual object I have to show. Again, which isn't much, but is something that I'm super proud of anyway. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to make something that I'm really, really proud of ultimately. But, Here's me in the adventure, here's the memory, here's, you know, here's moving in and out of layers. Something that in the end you won't be able to do just whenever you want. Um, you have to earn the right to go back and forth, either by selecting memory. Um, when you're in the adventure, by selecting memories and going back in to the shooting. And when you're in the shooting, by earning time so that you can go back into the, the adventure. So, so I don't know, like this, this, is, this is really exciting stuff for me. Uh, I just wanted to share, and uh, hopefully you think the idea is cool, and uh, who knows when it'll be done, maybe it'll be a year, maybe it'll be two, um, maybe it'll be never, and I'll have like five minutes of game only, but uh, I really like the idea, and I'm hoping that once I figure out, you know, once I'm sort of past the initial, I'm making a game, learning curve, that this could maybe be, be something. So anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for watching and listening, and uh, I guess I will catch up with you soon.